In this video, we're just looking at some of the practical aspects of organic chemistry. In particular, we're going to look at how you could separate a mixture of these four compounds uh, just by a simple uh, aqueous extraction means. So that's using your separating funnel. Okay. So your separating funnel looks something like this. Now this is usually this is quite a a, a tall, thin separating funnel. Mainly they're a bit more bulbous. Um, so that at the partition where you've got your, your aqueous layer and your organic layer, there's a larger surface area. Uh, it's got a tab here which allows you to, uh, to run out your solvents. So you should have, so we did do a uh, aqueous extraction um, as part of one of our uh, experiments towards the end of second year. Okay, so here we've got um, these four substances. Um, methylbenzene is a non-polar solvent. Uh, it's a liquid at room temperature. Amino benzene, sometimes called aniline, is a liquid at room temperature. Phenol and benzoic acid are two uh, crystalline solids. So there's no simple way of just separating these. And especially if we want to um, take these and actually isolate samples of each of these. Okay, so how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to exploit the fact that toluene has got no uh, polar groups on it, it is non-polar. Aminobenzene has got this amine group, so therefore it is weakly basic. Hopefully you're thinking the lone pair of nitrogen has been de is delocalized into the um, uh, benzene ring, so it's not as strong as base to say uh, ammonia or triethylamine. Uh, we've got phenol, <coughs> which is a weak uh, acid. Uh, it's got a pKa value of about 10, which means it's very weak. Uh, whereas uh, the carboxylic acid, or benzoic acid, has a pKa value of about 4, maybe a bit less, um, but somewhere in that region. Okay, so how are we going to separate these? We're going to separate these by sequentially, so one after the other, by washing, uh, by taking a solution of these four, perhaps in an organic solvent such as ethyl ethanoate, and then washing with different um, solutions of either acid or base. Okay. Right, so the first thing to do is we're going to extract the amino benzene first of all. Um, and the way we're going to do that, we're going to explain, exploit the fact that this is a, a, uh, an, a base. And so if we were to wash our solution, our ethyl, ethyl ethanoate solution with something like one mole per decimeter cubed, hydrochloric acid um, then we should extract all of this amino benzene into the aqueous layer okay so then it will go into the aqueous layer this leaves <coughs> um, these three substances behind the next thing we could do is to take out the benzoic acid. The benzoic acid is a stronger acid than phenol. So this means that if we were to wash this with say uh, a weak solution, so or perhaps non-concentrated non solution, one mole per decimeter cubed, uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate solution, Then we would deprotonate this part here, and then the sodium benzoate would go into the aqueous layer. Okay, and again, for each of these extractions, if we were to wash um, two times with hydrochloric acid and then two times with uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate, making sure we keep our aqueous washings 
in separate uh, conical flasks that would allow us to access these uh, compounds at a later time. Okay, so hopefully after those two different sets of washings, we will be left with a mixture of methyl, benzene and phenol. Phenol is a weak acid, so therefore phenol can be extracted at this point uh, using again, probably something like one mole per decimeter cubed potassium hydroxide solution. That forms uh, the, so the potassium phenoxide. So we, so we exchange this hydrogen, make an ionic compound, where well that's O minus K plus. And again, that would go into the aqueous layer. And then, finally, you will be left with methyl benzene. Okay, now, what you're probably thinking, or what I'm hoping you're thinking, is how do we liberate these three substances out of our solutions? Okay. So, for this solution, all you would have to do is to adjust the pH. Um, so, we would have the ammonium uh, chloride salt dissolved in water. If you were to adjust the pH, adding a little bit of uh, sodium hydroxide that would release the amine again and you could extract that by washing it with say ethyl thanoate. The second uh, component here you would have made the sodium benzoate so okay Ooh, just lost my positive charge so I've just got a positive charge here sorry um, and when um, the sodium benzoate, and if we were to acidify this again with something similar like uh, one more hydrochloric acid, that would uh, liberate the free carboxylic acid, which could then be uh, uh, dissolved in something like ethyl acetate and extracted again. A similar process with the um, with the potassium phenoxide. So you'd acidify gently with uh, dilutes uh, hydrochloric acid. Um, releases the phenol, which you can extract into your uh, aqueous layer. Sorry, into your organic layer, such as ethyl thanoate and you would be able to have three separate samples of these. Now we have one added complication though. All of these four substances now would be in our ethyl thanoate and so we would have to um, distill off some of our ethyl thanoate to either allow us to crystallize out the phenol or the benzoic acid from their solutions, or we would have to do a fractional distillation to allow us to distill off some of our products, uh, our amino benzene or methyl benzene. Okay, so it's quite a complicated process, uh, and I'm not expecting you to be faced with anything quite so difficult on your exam. However, certain aspects of this might crop up. So, for example, um, they, the examiners might want to ask about how, how could you get rid of the ethanoic acid um, that has been produced as a byproduct in the synthesis of, of aspirin. Okay, well, aspirin, um, you, form, you formed an ester in aspirin, so therefore uh, you could extract out the ethanoic acid using sodium hydro sodium hydrogen carbonate solution, just like we've done here, uh, and so on. So, uh, don't worry too much about this, but try and just get some of these uh, ideas uh, for your exam. Probably more likely for paper three. Thank you for watching.